Hey, welcome to another edition of Mississippi Stories. And our guest today is somebody who, well, I mean, I've really loved his artwork for years. And then I've gotten to know him and I've gotten to know his family. And it just makes me appreciate what he does even that much more. And you probably are very familiar with him because he's very prolific when it comes to art. But he's also on television now, thanks to uh, Palette to Palette that's on Mississippi Public Broadcasting with his partner in crime, Robert St. John, who also have teamed up, I guess, for four books now. I was trying to, trying to make sure I got that straight. But you've got Southern Palette, um, Italian Palette, Mississippi Palette. Risky. Yeah. So lots of palettes. So, well, anyway. yes, we've got four palette books and, uh, uh, oops, never mind. I didn't, she had to push a button. There we go. Um, yes, we've done four books and really kind of five books, but we haven't, the fifth one is not out yet. And it was, uh, to be, uh, an Italian travel guide and something happened last year. I might want to tell you about it. Yeah. There, anyway. there was something that kind of disrupted everything, including travel. Yeah. As a matter of fact, why thank yes. you. Why White Waters, of course, is um, a Mississippi treasure, and you know what? I love having storytellers on this on this uh, interview series, and you were definitely one of my favorites. It, White, I mean, I don't know whether where to start with with you. To be honest with you, um, it, you know, number one, it's good to start with your family. We'll talk about them in a minute. Yeah. I, I was thinking about Sam Gore the other day, and I picked up his book. Yeah. And I was flipping through it, and Sam Gore was your mentor over at Mississippi College for, for many years, and really up until he, he passed away. And I love this quote that he said about you in an article. He was very pleasant. <laughs> I don't know if my mentor would say that about me, but that, that, that was great. But I, I'll say this about Sam. You know, everybody thinks of Sam as this great sculptor. You know, obviously, he just was incredibly um, gifted when it came to sculpture, but I was looking through and I was looking at some of his watercolors. Yeah. He was really good at watercolor also. And I see a lot of how your style, early style, kind of started there. Were you that you know, inspired by him and when he taught you? Well, yeah, I, I took watercolor a year before I was supposed to take watercolor. You have to have these prerequisites. And I just kind of wanted to take watercolor really badly. And so I just signed up and Nobody noticed that I didn't have the prerequisites and I never said anything. I never even mentioned that to Dr. Gore, but uh, they let me in and I happened to catch Dr. Gore at a time when he was particularly interested in watercolor. So it worked out really well. Um, um, it was first period, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, and studio classes are two periods. You have to take six hours, six actual hours to get three hours credit. So uh, I had watercolor until there was no more watercolor to be had. And then Dr. Gore designed these classes for me. They were studio classes. In other words, you could assign what you wanted to them, but they were really watercolor. So I had more watercolor than, uh, you know, was available. So, and I mean, that kind of, that kind of lit the fire. I remember in the Clarion Ledger, they had some of your really early paintings hanging up in there. And uh, it was really yeah. fun to see. When did you start doing this for professionally? When did you start painting professionally? Well, you know, there's professionally and then there's making money. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, yeah. I always painted when I was a kid. I painted uh, all the time. Um, but I got out of school. I got out of school and went back to school, got my master's and uh, had a few false starts. But that was always the idea was to, to uh, do this for a living. In fact, Dr. Gore was the guy who said, you know, you can do this. He was the adult person in my life who actually who said I, I could do this I he, we were in a car one time and he said what do you want to do with your life what and I said well I, of course I want to paint and he said well you know do you want to do commercial art or teaching and I said no I want to paint I want to be a, 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 a exhibiting artist and paint and I said but I you know, don't know if I can do this and he said well sure you can and um and he may have just been talking, but I took it as gospel. Yes, you can do this. And um, I started painting on the streets of Jackson because I couldn't get, I'd saved up some money with the Arts Commission doing the artists in school program and moved back and um, had about six months worth of money uh, saved. I'd had a few starts before, but you know, you get a job, save money, quit, paint, run out of money, get another job, save money, quit, paint, run out of money. Well, this was the last time. So I had about six months of money saved and I was painting on the street. 
because nobody could show me. They said, well, you know, nobody knows you. So I was painting uh, in the 80s, uh, early, well, 1980. And um, it was very, very hot. And I thought that would work. Uh, but it turns out people, people weren't buying street art at the time. And uh, I guess they thought I was homeless. Um, but I say that because they would put money in my box. And, wow. uh, you know, I would give it back. But, you know, they, they would do that. And there was one person, though, who, whose job was to um, um, line up exhibits at the Deposit Guarantee Plaza, which was probably the best place to show in the whole state. It was the center of the financial district. And people would, while they were waiting on bank loans or making deals or something, they would go peruse around there and look at art. Except I wasn't going to get a show there because I didn't know anybody. And this lady said, hey, one day she said, oh, you know, this, someone canceled the show uh, at the exhibit area here, and we need to show in two weeks. Now, if I had sold everything or anything, <laughs> um, or if I just quit painting over those six months, um, you know, that wouldn't have happened. Um, but as it was, I had all these paintings that I couldn't sell, and uh, she gave me an exhibit space, and I kind of rummaged around and got everything framed and uh, we sold everything. And I thought, okay, this is a start. And it was a start and the starts, you know, you know, whatever you might do down the road, that's all great and good. But if you don't continue, if you don't have a good start, if you don't have a start, you're not gonna finish. So that was really important to me uh, that that lady did that. Um, and, you know, I, I forget her name, I've got it somewhere, but. Uh, that was our only, you know, crossing of paths and really nice lady. So you, you I've always depended. You haven't run um, into her since? Oh, uh, yes, I have. She was okay. a friend of my father's, it turns out. But she was always friendly and she would talk every day to me when I was on the street painting. And uh, it, it was remarkably hot that summer. Um, and, you know, all these things that happen in your life, they seem like, they're little things, but they're little nudgings or little bends. Uh, you know, they're, uh, they're really important. That was uh, very, very important to me to begin painting. Yeah, I was going to ask you, if, if you hadn't seen her again, did you check her for wings on the back of her, you know, like she was some kind of angel that pushed you in the right direction? And, you know, you, you kind of reminded me, Stephen Pressfield wrote one of my favorite books, A War of, of Art. And, um, you know, he talks to talk about just do, do the work. And, you know, there are days as artists when you want to procrastinate or not do it. And I think you now, you've got so much muscle memory. You love getting out there and getting there and creating and doing. But sometimes there's that thing. But I think if you, like you said, if you had not done the work, you wouldn't have had the paintings. And when, you know, Lee King, once again, Jackson's Lee King, who worked with um, James Brown, James Brown told him, said, whenever you get a chance to jump up on the stage, be ready. And, and <laughs> And you got a chance to, to jump up on the stage. And so that was good. You know, and it's hard to think of a time ever in Jackson when people didn't have your paintings in their house. Wow. Well, that's a nice thing. You know, it's funny you say James Brown. Uh, in my studio, uh, it's more of a shop. For years, I had a sign that I'd made. I just wrote it out, big cardboard. It said, become James Brown, <laughs> yeah. which, which meant, you know, he's the hardest working man in showbiz. Right. That was what I admired about him. What you just said. He's a... Uh, you know, this idea that the muse hits you, the muse hits me, but I'll tell you, sometimes it hits me once I make myself start right. that I didn't want to do. You know, I just get up and I do it and invariably something will happen that satisfies me, but it makes me feel like this is what I need to be doing. And sometimes it's dramatically good, but it, it usually happens like that. I don't wake up in the morning saying, oh, I'm just going to get out there. I have to kind of make myself do that. But when I make myself, um, the muse can kick in, of course, a little coffee helps along the way. But, um, you know, you, you're, you're an everyday kind of guy. You, you have the disciplines. You uh, understand that, um, you know, it's not all about just uh, the, the muse. You can kind of kick it in with your own efforts. You know, my dad had a car garage. He loved cars and, and he decided to go into business for himself and he, he started the car garage. 
And, you know, there was a time when suddenly our cars didn't run because, you know, he was like, he had to work on cars all day. He didn't want to work on our cars. And, and I think about what I do for a living. And there are days sometimes when I guess like, oh, I got to get up and make the donuts, you know, or whatever. But there are times when I'm doing a piece of like, I went to California the last couple of weeks and I did some paintings, although it was on the iPad, I did some paintings of the scenes I saw in California and I totally got lost in it. When you paint and when you do do that, is it work or is it one of those things where you just get into the flow and suddenly you, you, you're done after, you know, the, the hour or two hours it takes you to paint the painting and you just, the time is totally passed. Well, it is work, but it's work that's rewarding. Uh, I, I get, you know, people, I, I think there's another illusion that this is somehow relaxing and uh, I enjoy looking back and there are moments of, you know, um, great peace that I can experience but usually in a painting almost always I will say pretty much always on the good paintings there's conflict it's like a book you know a book you don't want to pick up a book where nothing happens someone's killing somebody someone's having an affair someone's stealing money there's some conflict or something going on that has to be solved or resolved and that's how it is for painting for me I, I, I can't say that it I just oh, I'm relaxed when I paint I'm fighting with a paint sometimes yeah. Um, but it's a good fight. It's, 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 um, what I, I didn't say this, I don't think, or maybe I did and I repeated it so much. I think someone else did, but there's a saying, and if someone ever hears this, who's hearing the podcast, please get in touch with me and tell me who was the guy who said it. Life is struggle. Learn to love the struggle. Right. Of course, the thing about learning to love the struggle, once you learn it to love it, it's not struggle anymore. Um, that's how it is for me in painting. Uh, it's a struggle but it's a struggle that satisfies me and it's something that I must do. And the only real explanation I can give for this, the better explanation is not with words, but with paint. It's just, that is the answer, the, the paint. I ask you this question. Um, if somebody asked me this same question, I couldn't give an exact answer, but I could give just kind of a ballpark. How many paintings do you think you've painted in your career? Too many and not enough. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I, I, uh, I have to consult with Christy. We were talking about this the other day. My wife, Christy. How many would you guesstimate? 50. 50. Oh, paintings. paintings. Over 7,000. Uh, yeah. Let's say over 7,000. Yeah. Uh, but who's counting, you know? No, uh, I, I figured I'm around 7,200 cartoons since I've lived here. So we're about in the same ballpark. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, the numbers are, um, I, I wish I had painted everything and put a one, a two, and a three, <laughs> and a one, and a two, because it would be interesting to know, but it would be just as interesting for me to see the progresses and the digressions. Yeah. Uh, not everything progresses, you know, the uh, chart is not, it's not like that. Right. It's like that. It's like that. Sometimes it's like that. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, uh, you're not always moving upward but you're moving and uh, the overall movement is what I like to count. I like to uh, count that. I'll have days that don't work out and there are days that frustrate the heck out of me. Uh, but mostly when I look back at a painting, I remember what happened that day. I remember uh, someone coming up and, um, and, you know, saying something nice. I remember Jeff Good making the block and giving me some bottled water. Yeah. I remember um, uh, a bird that comments on my painting. <laughs> Just recently, I had one comment twice in, on the same painting. Um, I don't know if it was the same bird, but uh, things like that, they pepper the, uh, the painting. It's not just shapes and color. It's, it's, a, it's a, a visual diary for me. I can, that's how I look at things. It's like looking at your bank account, except not as sad. <laughs> you're seeing now the deposits but i think you you nailed something there because i mean a lot of people get hung up with the the end goal right they think mm -hmm. that's when they're going to be happy but that like you said that roundabout all crazy journey that you take is really where the magic happens and i think one of the things that what you do is that i in a way i envy because i mean i'm always behind a drawing table for instance and or sitting in one location you're out on location. I mean, you literally go out 
wherever you're going. I, I saw in the Brookhaven paper, um, they were all, they actually ran an article saying that you were going to be in town painting and, and to say, come, which is pretty cool, actually, that, you know, that you're the place where you were born writes an article saying that you're coming back and you'll be painting. But it's kind of an event whenever you now these days when I see you painting somewhere and I, I hadn't seen you in a while because we've been all locked up in our houses. But yeah, it, it is kind of cool when you see white waters out there on location. It's, you know, I, 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 was, I was brought up, I, ha I had art lessons really, really early, and I was always taught to work from life. Nowadays, there's a movement called plein air, and that's really what it is, it's working. Plein air is just French. It means uh, painting in the open air, in the open air is what it means. Um, and uh, I've always been taught that way. Um, uh, I don't use photographs to paint from. Uh, sometimes I use them for a reference or something, but, uh, but really the bulk of, the overwhelming bulk of what I paint is work done from life. Yeah. Um, because nowadays we have, uh, you know, we have all kinds of things which are wonderful. You yeah. know, they allow us to connect with people. Uh, uh, pretty frequently they allow us to argue with people. Um, but to bring it back to something more human, to me, it's important to be there. Uh, working with the paper, you know, you go to the source. Yeah. Uh, that's what it is for me as an artist to paint, to go to the source of what is true and what is real to me. And the, that's the real experience of being there. Um, you know, the way there's smells you get, there are um, all kinds of sensory things that enter in to your experience that make its way to the paper. Uh, I don't know how that happens. That's uh, what's it, Shakespeare in love. It's a mystery, you know? It, I don't know how it happens and it still intrigues me the fact that I don't know. If I knew too much of how it worked, I would probably get bored with it and try something else. Well, you have a little bit of, I mean, you're, you're an impressionistic style and the way you paint, but the thing is when you're doing it live, and this is what I admire about you, you have to be fairly quick enough to, to capture the light that you're seeing at the time because the light change, things change, you know? I mean, so if, you, if, yes. it, took you, if it took you 15 hours to paint a scene, it would be totally different by the time you got done painting. It would be dark, you know, and so forth on yeah. that. So that's, I mean, that's literally what I admire about what you do. Because like I said, when I, I have to paint, I paint from pictures, you know, because I'm lazy. Mm -hmm. and now, well, no, that's just, there's no way of doing it. No. And, and I'm, <laughs> there's so many ways to do this. <laughs> well, and when I draw now, and, and when I started with Mississippi today, I started drawing on the iPad, which is, you know, I like in some sense, because it's about half the time but I still miss the actual drawing on paper and the feeling of the pen scraping and, you know, and making the mistakes and having to figure out how to fix it and so forth. Now I, now I can just hit the undo button. So like I said, what you do, I admire, and I think it brings a lot of freshness and, and a lot of life to what you're painting. Well, I, I tell people I'm a professional second grader. Yeah. Um, I'm doing pretty much what I did in the second grade. Um, well, if I had gone to the second grade, it would have been. But that's another story. And um, I, I don't know. This, 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 it's a compulsion to paint. It's not like something that um, I didn't. It's not like I went to the, uh, you know, the person, the counselor talking about the future or look at my standardized test scores and see where I need to go professionally. This was just something I was going to do. So. I had to figure out how to make a living because I was going to do it anyway. I mean, I, I did it for a long time, losing money. And um, um, it's, of course, better when you can pay your bills and all that kind of thing. But uh, uh, it's a compulsion. And it's not something, it's, it's not an itch that that's going to go away. In college, I had a few people, uh, mostly like the father of the girl that I was dating at the moment, who would say, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I want to paint for a living. I was honest about it, at least. And I said, oh, you know, you're going to hate it if you do it for a living. Can't you do something else? And, and you know, I think that was mostly to keep his daughter, you know, uh, with shoes. Right. Or things like that. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things you have to do. You don't, you don't get a whole lot of approval while you're doing it. Like when I'm outside painting in the beginning and all through the middle and up close to the very end, uh, it looks like a horrible mess. And, um, but that's the struggle part. You have to make these things that are in, imperfect 
better. Uh, um, and not everybody gets what you're doing, and that's okay. Um, I, I pretty frequently have this common comment. I say, is this the first painting you've done? And I don't mean that day, you know, because it looks like a mess, you know, it's, it's, it is a mess, but that's, that's how it works. You, you resolve it through that's your will. Yeah, I've seen you paint live before. That's what's so fun because it just all comes together at the very end. Um, you know, it just, it's, it's fun to watch, you know. Uh, let, let me ask you this because a lot of times when I'm out walking, I'll bring my, my phone with me, of course, and because and the phone has to be with me everywhere. But I'm out there and I'll see okay. some, and just something just jumps out at me and I see it and I take a picture of it. And it turns out to be really nice. It, when you're painting and you're, you're kind of scouting around, is it just some angle, some, you know, mm -hmm. vision? Or is it just something that just hits you and says, no, I got to paint this right here, right now? Yeah, that's pretty much what it is. You know, I, I'll, I'll drive around. Um, I used to have, drive Volkswagens and Volkswagen vans. I had 10 Volkswagen vans. I got out of that business at precisely the time I should have stayed in that business. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, now, but you know, I could them. sleep in them. I could work on them. Parts were cheap. The car was cheap. Yeah. Um, and so I could drive around and paint. Uh, when, when, the, when the van would break down and I would get out and walk this thing that I'd driven many, many times, it would always feel very different. And there's something about the immediacy of being there, not being enclosed in glass. Um, yeah, when I'm out walking, uh, I'll discover things that I've, when I've driven past that hit me in a, a more direct, uh, uh, personal way. Um, and I try to listen to that. Um, there's a joke I have that everything starts looking better on a quarter of a tank. I could drive around and look at things and be pretty happy, but at some point I have to commit this to paper. Yeah. And um, that's when things begin. And I will use my phone. Uh, I will frequently use my phone to compose things or at the end, I will use my phone and take a photograph of the painting and it helps me evaluate what the painting, uh, what's going on in the painting. It removes, uh, it removes the painting and helps me see it uh, um, like somebody else does a little bit. I also use a mirror. I, I use a mirror um, when I'm a little past halfway, getting close to the end. Uh, the hardest thing to, uh, for me to get is the objectivity I need to make judgments. I'm the guy who's got to make the judgments, but I'm also the guy who's so close to it, you can't really tell what he's doing. So I look at the painting in the mirror. Here's the painting here. I look at it in the mirror. And um, the left side is on the right side. Yeah. It's the same painting, but it's backwards. And so I'm able to make a good judgment about that. And really, the very end of the painting is where things hopefully pull together. Like you've been lining up dominoes and um, it's taking you forever to line these dominoes up. It's all set up and process. And you, you push that first one over and they click, 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 click. Um, hopefully that's what happens. That's the, the idea. That's, that is the uh, faith that I have in seeing and reacting to this and painting that at the end it will come together. It doesn't always work. It is not a science. I um, recently did a project where I had to do 50 drawings like in three weeks and they were pen and ink, which was great, but I hand colored them with watercolor. Yeah. And I'm sitting there trying to, to deal with watercolor, which I really started to enjoy. But then the, by the time I got done with the 50th piece, I had my respect for you was off the charts because as much, you know, as, I mean, I deal with acrylics or I deal with pen and ink or I deal with stuff, of, you know, you can scan and, and erase. Watercolor is a very unforgiving uh, medium. It's like, you make a mistake, by God, you got to live with it. But at this point, I guess, I guess at this point, it's kind of so second nature for you. You kind of know where you're going to go with that. How long did it take you to get totally comfortable with, with watercolor as a medium? 10,000 hours. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I don't know. That. I mean, I'm, I'm um, funny, um, but there's probably some truth to it. I, I think there is truth to that. I mean, yeah. there's this, you know, practice, practice, practice. But uh, I still feel inadequate and I still feel frustrated. Right. And I, 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 I've, but I've turned it over. I, I used to think when I was in my 20s that if I just work really hard, I'll get this and I'll get it. And I'll understand I, all I got to do is the same thing over and over and over. Once I get that idea. And uh, it, I'm peeling the onion now. It's each there's another layer underneath there, and you cry when you peel the onion. It's yeah. painful. And um, but really, it's 
it, I, I'm frustrated by little bitty things when I'm painting. Um, um, like sometimes my, the cuff of my jacket will pick up a brush and it really irritates me. Um, and it's nothing, I know it's not a big deal. It's just the fact that I become hypersensitive to things. I have to watch this, I don't yell at somebody or something. Because it's not them, it's me. You know, people say that, but it really is true. It is the hypersensitivity that you fall into naturally with the process of painting. It's not like uh, anything else I do. Um, um, my mom will say, oh, well, you know, you're so talented, you're so talented. And, you know, I kind of want to say, well, you know, I work pretty hard at this, Mom. Um, uh, it, it, it's the talent part, you know, uh, we've all known people who are talented and it becomes too easy for them and they just drop away. Yeah. I like the struggle. I like the fact that I don't know. And it frustrates me. It's like a date, you know, um, 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 you, you go out with somebody and they tell you everything you want to hear and you just don't know anything about what they think because they're just kind of parroting you. Uh, parroting, not parenting. It's a different kind of day. <laughs> yeah. um, but, but but the one that, it, that it involves you and holds your interest, and that's what it is, is the one who has their own thinking. And watercolor is like, uh, it's like riding a horse. You don't really drive a horse. Um, you, you ride the horse, the horse enters into the process. It's, it's a dance. If I danced, it would be compared to a dance, but I, I don't dance. I can't dance. You know, I, I wish I had known your dad um yeah yeah what i mean and i loved i didn't realize he fought in world war ii and i thought that was amazing here he, you know he was he was beloved every time you post a picture of him there's always somebody underneath it on facebook saying oh i loved him he was a great guy he was an educator he was a coach um was a star football player back i guess at whatever you know southern miss back i can't remember what southern miss used to be called but anyway he was there and, yeah. and then his son, you know, one of his three sons, and by the way, Joel and Jim are a really great guy. You would, your, your hey, Joel, like mom, Lucy, who I love your mom, tell her I said hello. I haven't seen her in a million years, but she loves you. Yeah, no, she's good people. And, but I mean, you know, my dad was kind of the same way, you know, here, I remember walking up to him at eight, telling him I was going to be a cartoonist and he just kind of patted me on the head and he said, and you're going to be the best one ever. You know, yeah. that was that was kind of the way your folks were with you. Um, one of the things my dad told me when I was in college, he said, go get a marketing degree, you know, just because you're going to there's going to be people who can outdraw you and outthink you. But if you know the business, you'll be fine. You've done really well with the business side of it. And one of the things you did, I think, was really smart was starting the gallery all the year, years ago that you did. Tell us a little bit about that side of it, because it's so hard yeah. sometimes creative people to be both right-brained and left-brained at the same time? Well, uh, starting with the marketing part, I did not get a degree in marketing, but I did the next best thing. I married someone who has a marketing company, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which was really helpful. She's quite uh, good at it, by the way, yes. But, you know, I, I, I have done the gallery um, kind of like an elevated lemonade stand yeah. for a long time. Um, I did it because I had to, uh, I wanted, I did not want to become a gallery. I wanted to become uh, more autonomous uh, with, um, you know, with, with the workplace here. I didn't want to have, uh, I didn't want to show alongside other people. I liked the community of that, but the competitiveness of that, I just felt bad about. Yeah. I didn't want to do that. What I wanted to do, and I've always, tried to uh, do this is to compete with myself, um, to compete with the last thing that I did and try to figure out a way to do this better. And so that's what the gallery is about. Early on, we started the gallery. Uh, I, was, I was asked to um, outfit a company with a lot of paintings. And since I, I know a bunch of artists and they're all friends of mine, it would have been a pretty easy job except it would have started down the road that I didn't want to start down, which is to become a dealer. I'm not a dealer. Um, uh, I, I try, the hardest part of this job for me is working in the marketplace and not becoming too aware of the marketplace. Yeah. Um, not letting that determine what I think a good painting is. Right. Um, um, 
so my business model for this was more an ideological kind of thing. It was, it wasn't, it wasn't like something, it wasn't the way things are done in this business all the time. I wanted to be able to produce paintings and show them in an ongoing way, um, like an ongoing show. Um, and I, I wanted, because uh, in a gallery situation, you might get a show once a year for a month. Yeah. Here we have um, an ongoing show 12 months out of the year, or as of last year, 10 months out of the year. But um, that's my, my model for this is uh, as much personal as it is professional. I, I wanted to have something, uh, a place where I could show my work. And if I thought it was something that needed to be showed, shown, I would, um, I would show it. Uh, I wouldn't have to go through the filter of, is it marketable? Is it, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't, didn't want to compete with artists. I have a lot of great artist friends. Um, Ron Lindsay, Paul Fayard, Sam Beavers, and I get together and uh, about once a week when I'm in town and we have our paintings there and we hash each other and tear each other up. Uh, that's the kind of community I like. Yeah. Um, um, anyway, that's what the gallery has been for me. I loved what you said about it being like a lemon sta lemonade stand because you really do get an, an experience when you come to the gallery. And I think you've nailed that. And it's also been a really important anchor for the whole downtown area of Clinton. You know, as it was getting its act together and everything, you were right there in the middle. And, and it's, it's, I mean, I think it's just, I really, really, I've been, the few times I've been, I really do enjoy when I go over there because you get a sense of place there. And, and so congratulations on that. I well, touched thanks. on- I touched on your parents a little bit and you know you mentioned a little bit earlier how you were taking painting lessons and everything as, as a kid how early did your parents figure out that you had an artistic gift um i was i was two and a half and i remember this and we moved to this house and my dad uh you know when you're a coach they'll give you a house to live in maybe uh, i'm not sure they do that with the english teachers i got something in my eye sorry and um, so he moved us from West, from, um, from Amory to Florence, Mississippi. And there was this house there that, that the school owned and we uh, lived in that. But we walked in, I'm sure my mother was not at that negotiation of you know, getting the job. Um, we walked in, there were holes in the floor. And so she patched the floors uh, and painted the floor but you could still see the texture of the patch. So to disguise the texture of the patch, she uh, let me with her and my brother Jim spatter paint the floor. And I really liked that, that I did this, it hit the floor and it made me feel a certain way. Um, that's as good as I can describe how painting makes me feel, just the physical act of putting paint down there. And that's really how Pollock painted too. You know, he would stand above and a spatter of the paint there. Um, so when, when um, before I was in school, uh, my mom went to this lady who also taught me to read, uh, Rose Taylor in Florence. And she asked her if she would teach. Um, and she said, oh, I can't do that. I just can't do that. Oh, I just don't think I can do that, you know. And then we got back home uh, and she called and said, well, I'll try to teach him, but I just know the basics. So I'm, I had years and years of the basics, which turns out to be a pretty good thing. Um, we would work from life. Um, <laughs> uh, Bob and Frank Fancher, preacher's kids, she would babysit them. And I saw them years later, not that long ago. And uh, Frank was telling me, you know, well, I didn't know it was art class. She was babysitting us and one day it was art class. So I, I, that's how it started. Yeah. Um, and she would have, she would put uh, newsprint on the table, tape it and give us vine charcoal and we'd make these lines. And I wish Miss Rose was alive now. She lived to be 103 in a really good way, but she would make us make lines for what seemed like 10 or 15 minutes. And then we'd go outside and work from life. I mean, she may have been just trying to get the energy out of these little wiggle worm kids, yeah. which we were. Um, but it also made me uh, connect the whole expressive thing, uh, the, the non-objective line uh, thing with the working from life 
uh, direct thing because we go outside after making scribbles and um, draw a tree or a house or something. Um, that's that's how it began with me. And um, I was always the kid who, you know, did the turkey. You probably were too, Marshall. Uh, Thanksgiving, you, you get the colored chalk and you get to make the turkey on the board or maybe Christmas, do a Christmas scene, you know. And, uh, and that, um, that was reinforced time and time again. Um, I was also the kid who was looking out the window and, you know, I, I, I goofed off a lot. A good bit of my second grade, yeah. I didn't go to, uh, I lived with my grandmother. Uh, Joel was burned and it yeah. was, um, you know, the attention had to get turned to Joel. And uh, I lived with my grandmother who was a dorm mother at Southern. So I tell people I went to the uh, Southern in the second grade at Bolton Hall. And um, <laughs> I think my grandmother didn't like driving or something. We went a couple of days to that school near the Hercules plant there. And then uh, Jim and I just didn't go to school uh, for the rest of that. And uh, had workbooks and stuff, but uh, I painted and drew. That's how I dealt with things. Um, and that's how little kids do. They, they don't even know they're expressing, they're just doing it. And it occupied me and it, made me feel better it made made things better for me i not to go into any of the particulars but i know you hit a pretty rough patch a few years ago and your friendship mm -hmm. with robert st john has been really something special for both of you I, I, it's knowing both of you i mean just the, the fact that you guys start working together professionally but the friendship that developed from that has been very good for both of you uh, and it's been fun to watch from the outside that said, um, you were able to go to Italy and able to do a lot of painting there. Tell us a little bit about the therapeutic aspect of art on that for you, because you said yeah. as a kid, it was obviously something that was therapeutic. But I mean, as a big kid now, it still has saved you several times, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah. I mean, a painting for the most part of my life, it's been a joyous celebration i just love it i can't wait to, get to it you know that kind of thing but there were some times uh you know, you know uh, that i had in my life that were difficult there were and uh i i and there was a little while i always used when things got rough i would paint my way through it and i would just push it through yeah and there were a few weeks i remember that i simply couldn't get through it but then um finally made myself and um, um, things got better. The therapeutic value of this, um, I never really appreciated. It was always like dessert for me, painting was. It was a great, fun, beautiful thing. Um, but there were times in my life, yeah, where it, it got me through. And um, it's, you know, uh, I understand what people meant by um, um, getting through hard times. Uh, you know, if you live long enough, if anybody lives long enough, they're going to come upon some obstacles yeah. and how you deal with those obstacles is going to determine what your life is after that. And um, it doesn't end. There's no one obstacle. I mean, there'll be obstacles in front of me. Uh, maybe something I'm going through now, I don't even know. But but that particular time, it uh, it, it it did save me. I mean, um, I. um Life was hard. There were some hard things to go through. And painting uh, gave me a catharsis. It gave me a release. It gave me uh, direction. It helped me figure things out. When I get through painting, I will say this. When I get through painting, life is a more balanced place. Uh, the struggles um, for that moment that I'm painting, and maybe somewhat immediately after that, I feel like. Uh, uh, God is in his heaven and all is right. Yeah, you can, even when things aren't right. <laughs> right. And, and I would say, I, I just knowing, seeing that, that, that work that you did during that time, it just it adds a little bit of extra special to it because I know what you were going through. And I know you can just, you can see a little bit of that in your painting. And it's really pretty incredible on that. You know, you are very gifted as a musician as well. Uh, I have you've played on my radio show before. That was fun, um, and you do some writing as well. Tell tell us a little bit about the the different forms of art that you do outside of painting, because it's 
it's kind of neat to see that you you kind of cross train like that. Uh, I've always been uh, drawn to the arts. Uh, I had. Um, I like that. Drawn I, to the arts. That's good. I'm drawn to the arts. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and I, I grew up in Florence. We moved here when I was in the 10th grade. And uh, but I'll see my buddies from Florence, um, you know, once in a while. And um, I remember I wrote this one song and it got around the school. Uh, I always figured, you know, uh, um, um, the Beatles wrote their own stuff. So in my effort to copy the Beatles, I decided to write my own stuff. Uh, and there was this one gal that I had, um, oh, oh, you know, I, I just kind of thought she was wonderful. So I wrote this song about her. And I didn't know how romance was supposed to work. And nobody pulled me to the side and said, don't do this. So I played it in front of the whole school, embarrassing her so badly. Um, um, you know, so nowadays when when I'll see somebody from Florence, they'll they'll sometimes say, oh, yeah, I remember the, you were in the Green Apples and you sang that song. <laughs> it just haunts you. Um, um, thing about expression is you can't put too much of a filter on it. Yeah. Uh, and it still be expression. There's. I mean, I think people are expressive to the degree that they are able to not be aware of their own embarrassment and say what they really feel. Um, uh, it's, it's, it gets you in trouble though. Uh, but uh, if it's honest, I think it's always a good thing. In college, I got the Creative Writing Award. I just, I got all my electives over with. Uh, I mean, I got all my, uh, um, my requirements over with. So I had all these electives I could take and Filmmaking was a big one. I really enjoyed filmmaking uh, 16 millimeter with uh, 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 um, Billy Lytle. And um, I had uh, creative writing uh, at night. And, um, and it really was like beginning, middle, end, you know, the short story parts, yeah. tension, restraint, theme and variation. It made me start thinking in those terms and it greatly affected my painting. Um, but I've always done that. And, uh, uh, I guess I'm always going to do that. I mean, some things you get paid for and some things you just do on your own, but uh, they're pretty much the same thing to me. They're staying the way I feel. Uh, they're putting it into a, a material or a, a form um, and uh, then looking at it and say, oh, that's how I feel. It's not just telling everybody else how you feel. You're telling yourself how you feel, really, you know, because you knowing yourself was that that's the big deal you know know thyself and all that you um a friend a former neighbor of i sent a message the other day and said oh yeah well, she lives in south carolina she said i had dinner with Wyatt waters and his wife and i was like oh why it's on the road and you are on the road you're actually traveling around the southeast mm -hmm. uh, get, preparing for another book can you tell us a little bit about it Yes, uh, this had been an idea I wanted to do from my Volkswagen van days. I've been married two and a half years to the lovely Christy, and um, that model was not going to work. <laughs> There's only so much room in a Volkswagen van. So we bought uh, February before the pandemic uh, hit. We bought uh, and we're intending to um, travel the southeast. Um, uh, I'd spent uh, about a year in Italy and I thought, well, you know, this is good, but I kept getting further away from uh, what I wanted to do with uh, um, painting where I live. I mean, there's painting what you don't know. Yeah. And then there's painting what you do know and discovering aspects and uh, facets about that that you thought you knew pretty well. And that's that's the road we're on right now. We are uh, have a 16 foot casita. It's a, um, a camper, a pole behind. And uh, we're getting ready to do a five week jaunt uh, in a few days right now. Excellent. Uh, we're going to um, Eastern Tennessee, North, Cal North Carolina and, uh, and Northern Georgia. Uh, Christy plans the itinerary so we don't just meander, although there's a good bit of meandering. What we'll do is we'll, um, she has spots that uh, we're gonna try to make and we'll make and I will fill in the in-betweens with stuff we discover. And it's, it's a pretty good thing. And she's shooting video. We're, uh, we're doing an instructional um, uh, thing right now uh, on what we call not the how to paints, but the why to paints. Uh, what, it, uh, what it does to your thinking and the way you live in the world and um, uh, how, how it affects your life. Uh, it's not just about paint on paper, you know, it's, 
to me, the best part of painting, uh, I, I, can, I can make a living doing it and I'm grateful for that. Uh, people can say things, my mom really likes that, you know, it's, it's satisfying in that way, but what it does for the way you see things and the way you see your world, uh, for me, is the uh, most important thing. And that's, we're gonna be exploring that, with, uh, the book of the Southeast and the video. I look forward to the video. In fact, I, I, I really look forward to it. I, I have to admit, I did not really take many art classes, but I did take a painting class after college, um, when I was a janitor, I took a night class at the local unit, well actually a day class because I was working at night as a janitor. But I really, the thing I loved about painting was like you said, that it kind of changed how I see things. Instead of seeing line, I see value, you know, mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't see detail, I see information. And it teaches me how to look at a situation totally different. So, I mean, I'm really excited about that you're doing that. And talk about the last, you said, you and Chris have been married for two and a half years, and and, and it seems like um, that it's been very good for both of you. You seem to be. I always see you smiling. Now I know it's Facebook smiles. I know how. That works. <laughs> no, it's a real smile. It just okay. happens to be on Facebook. Okay. But yeah, that that I mean, I, I wanted to say something about that earlier. Thank yeah. you for bringing that up because, I mean, uh, I just feel energized yeah. with life right now, and I know that that. Uh, can come in a lot of ways. You know, there's pushing through stuff and smiling and keeping a good attitude. And then there's when things are just good too. Yeah. I mean, they're both good. Uh, they're both important. Uh, right now, I can't quit smiling a lot of the times. So, I mean, I just, I, I do enjoy life and Christy's an enormous part of this. Uh, you can't depend on someone to make your happiness, but it is great to share that with them. Uh, I really, I'm a happy guy. And, um, you know, as someone who has experienced depression, I remember um, talking with some friends. I got a lot of friends in the psychiatric community. They said, uh, well, you know, there's organic um, depression and there's situational depression. And, um, but uh, the situational bec can become organic if you go through it enough. Huh. And I thought, oh, golly, yeah. suppose I, Suppose when things get better, I, my, my attitude has shifted to where I don't even appreciate it. And uh, that was a big fear of mine. But then things got better and it wasn't like that. I, I immediately felt better and, and consistently have been that way. I mean, there are rough things, but I will say this, when your attitude of, about life is better, uh, when you look for things um, and when you experience joy, little things uh, become big. Uh, gratitude. I mean, I, I appreciate what gratitude does in getting you through things, Yeah. you know, but once you get through those things, uh, gratitude magnifies the okay to where it's great. And I don't even know why to describe what it does to the great stuff, but gratitude is an important thing. And I still need to practice that. This is not um, um, a singular event. Uh, it's an everyday thing. I, I need to, I still need to work on that. I got something to feel good about, though. I really yeah, I'm grateful for that. And it's very obvious. You both seem very happy, and it's it, you know it just like I said, from an outside observer, you're both great people. So you like to see that. That's good news. Speaking of a decent person, I'll, I'll bring Robert up again. <laughs> um, you and Robert, of course, did the TV show, and I know like my show and his show, y'all show. I think everything just kind of got put on hiatus a little bit because of, of COVID, or a little bit. Are y'all planning another season? Well, you know. I started, I'd already planned the Southeastern book and you can only do so much. So really we, we what we did, we did uh, five seasons, uh, five uh, seasons of uh, Palette to Palette. And right now I couldn't say that we're doing that. Uh, I think Robert's going to continue to work on uh, travel experiences, mostly yeah. with food. And, uh, but I'm, I'm working on. You're going to work on your project. Yeah. 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 If yeah. you know, you, I wish you could pedal two bikes, but you can only pedal one bike. You know? uh, and I'm not that good at multitasking. Um, so I, I kind of have to um, stay on one thing. So I'm working on this, this the idea of an instructional. I used to teach and I really like teaching a lot and I can get a little, little fix in once in a while with workshops. But since I've got the gallery and I, I'm working as a professional painter, your time is limited there. So um, 
so the instructional part of this is scratching that itch for me. It also feels good to do this because I've had so many generous people give me everything they had. And sometimes that everything, like there was one teacher, Ron Alexander, I'll have to say his name, he's a really good teacher. He uh, advised that I change my major when I was uh, going from my freshman to my sophomore year. And that was, I know, a very difficult thing to do. And I, I'd said, I'd mentioned that a few times in talking to people, and it made its way back to him that, oh, I'll show him. And that was not at all what that was. Um, yeah. um, it was a very loving, caring thing to tell somebody a difficult thing. Yeah. And it motivated me to really um, um, get involved and change the, uh, change the energy I was putting into um, my education. Um, so I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. And I've had so many people give me things like that in my life. Um, and I want to be able to do that with what I can do with this book and a video um, and continue to do workshops because that's, you know, that's, it's just paint on paper and it's, uh, you know, it's a couple hours a day, but what the effect it can have on the rest of your life uh, for me, at least, has been tremendous, and I want to uh, I want to give the stuff that has been given to me. I just happened to have a Miss Rose. I just happened to have parents who thought it was good that I did this. I just happened to have uh, a Doctor Gore uh, yeah. in my life. Um, um, all those were positive people. There were so many other people who said so many other things, but you know, uh, my dad said, you know. You don't have to buy what they're selling. You have to figure out whether it's worth keeping. And you have to use your sniffer for that because there's no litmus test for, for what's right and what's wrong. You have to use your conscience and your heart for that. Well, I think probably um, this might be a good time to wrap up. I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us and say, well, A, it's good to catch up with you. I, I don't think I've spoken to you in a while, so it's good to be able to just to be able to have a conversation with you about this. And I always love talking about creativity because I think, you know, you and I do very similar but very different things. And so it's kind of neat to hear about your process and what you do. I feel like I've learned something in the last hour. Um, go ahead and throw out your, your website and how folks can find you on. Yes. Social. Thank you for doing I'll, that's the one thing I forget a lot. Uh, we are whitewaters.com and um, whitewaters.com and uh, we are 307 Jefferson Street here in Clinton in the Brick Street area. And our hours are from 10 to 2 Wednesday through Friday. Uh, no, excuse me. 10. Yeah. 10 to 2. No. Golly, I don't even know. <laughs> you know, 10 to 4, Wednesday through Friday, and 10 to 2 on Saturdays. Thank Those you. are our new hours. That, okay. <laughs> You're like, I don't know. I just show up. It's my place. It That's matter. right. I'm usually outside of painting, but sometimes I'm here when it rains. Right. And you have a key, so you can get in anytime you want to. So <laughs> Anyway, tell Christy. Thank you so much, Marshall. Thank tell you. Tell Christy I said hello. Y'all travel safe and uh, look Very forward well. to seeing the new book. So talk to you later. Bye now.